Bola Metcalf has two divisions, Bola Plastics and Quality Beverages. Quality Beverages produces niche soft drink brands such as Jive and Dixie. Bola Metcalf has a market cap of 703 million rand, a dividend yield of 4.5% and a price to earnings ratio of 11. And you've also made a public apology to the Bola Metcalf team on this show. <laughs> Remind us and tread carefully. Don't put yourself in a situation where you've got to apologize again. I'm very cheerful and uh, resolute and bulletproof, so don't worry about me. But uh, no, the case here was um, interesting little Cape based company, traditionally in the plastics and manufacturing area. Then at one point they decided, I think they must have had a business relationship with a company that was bottling you know, beverages and they decided to buy the company as well. So that's where quality beverages came from. And the Jive uh, cool drinks are the ones that we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> gently, gently delicious. now. Delicious. delicious fantastic. <laughs> exactly. I like it that you <laughs> treading a fine line here. Viv, let's move on without uh, dwelling on <laughs> Paul's commentary there. <laughs> Bola Metcalf right now. Uh, again, we, we're seeing a bit of a rally here, obviously off the, the highs of around about 10 Rand, but we're still just above 8 Rand. Would that be right? It's yeah. about 7.50 or something now. 7.50. No, no, it's uh, above eight. Okay. Okay. Maybe uh, our graph is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're right. Yeah. Uh, look, the company, unlike Astropack, I mean, they've had had some issues here recently, but you see the overall trend is positive. The company's management has, has a history, like I mentioned, of, of, of doing things a bit better than the Astropack management has. Uh, right now, the beverage operations are sucking some of the profits of the Cape Town plant, but I think overall, if you look at the history of management, they probably have the ability and the, the know-how to get that back on track. So I do think this is a company which has had some issues right now, as you can see right there, but I do think it's probably going to continue in its upward trend. Why do you like this management team? Because it's been more stable. It has a history of performing as opposed to Astropack, in which we have more instability and a history of not performing. And when a company takes on a new like, you know, business, as Paul mentioned, and it has had a, like, you know, a slightly negative effect in terms of profits, you would look at the management in terms of the qualitative instead of the quantitative issues. And the qualitative issues of this management team, I think, are a bit stronger. Do you also like the management team here? Yeah, just some background on the management. The SAS family in Cape Town sort of put a business together with the um, Bowler family, and uh, it then sort of emerged. Michael Brain was the CEO for like two decades and is associated with the listing and the sort of modernization of the company. He's just retired and the younger Sass, Friedel Sass, who's like my age and you know, a mechanical engineer and so on, has just taken on the role. So now the dad is the chairman and uh, Sass the junior is the CEO. So it's that kind of company. There's a sort of a family element, but it's always been very conservative and they had a record which was until recently of uninterrupted growth in earnings and growth in dividends and so on. In the most recent results, they actually saw a decline in earnings, which was a big shock for their loyal fans. But the board did hold the dividend and increased it marginally. So it's a sign, as I always say, you watch the dividend. When a company's having trouble, the board may be mad, but often what the board will do is send the shareholders a message through the dividend to say that we are actually yeah, our solid sort of a footing. temporary thing. There was a strike and we ran out of carbon dioxide in Joburg and but all that. But we're not worried stuff. about our cash flows. We're going to yeah. pay some money back to you. Exactly. In terms of Bola Metcalf at current levels, is it pretty close to its all time highs if you track further back on the graph? Yeah, pretty close. I mean, I've looked at the five year graph. Um, as you see here, I looked a little bit further back. I think it's near, near the all time highs we hit earlier, you know, last year. But I do, I do think this is a case in which Paul has mentioned you know, there have been a continuing case of growing earnings. There has been a misstep. But you would trust management to come back. And I would do think that you would, even though you've seen all-time highs quite recently, you may be breaching them again. I'm excited that we could have a positive story coming mm -hmm. out of Bola Metcalf. Do we go to hot or not, mm. Paul? No, not for me. I think, uh, fairly, firstly, they're fairly small stalls, you know, 700 and something other market cap you said there. And I think for companies like this in an industry that's a bit dodgy to do well, they need to be much further advanced in finding new markets in the rest of the African continent.